I'd hope the soul Just so she won't be bothered and won't be told That anything is wrong with the being that negative So she shuts him out and tells her fuck off just let her live But ain't sure how she's supposed to start her life In that real world find love become a starter wife huh? But's on the fight cause she thinks it's apparent That her parents are being unfair and don't care about All the problems that she's going through And it's okay girl cause ain't nobody really knowing you right So she bottles them up and washes them down with friends that she's found in the bottles of crown and then wanders around the headspace she's made for herself pushes anyone away that might save her from this hello internet like all right guys um it's been great so far we have a good week left and we got a little a little spare stuff to just to help you sort of it's like the nicotine patch next week right we'll just do a little sort of partial week to help wean you off of music making month so um i want to uh just give you guys a couple rules if you're new to this uh, these events. Basically, uh, um, here's the key. If you've got a question for Kim, just put the word question in front of the, uh, in front of your question, just capital question. And that'll help me sort of zone in on it when I'm watching the chat fly by. And, uh, other than that, there's not much to it. If you want to have your music played in the intro to the show, you can tweet us your music at hashtag MMM prop songs or post it on our Facebook wall or send me a PM private message on our user forums. That works too. Some people have done that. A couple of them have even gotten on the show. So it's not like that's an instant sort of, you know, graveyard of your music. I check everything. I'll listen to everything and, and picks from everywhere. So that's, uh, that's it. I'm going to bring on our guest tonight. She is the, uh, I, I think it would be fair to say, the owner, operator, director, and creative mind behind Engine House Music. Uh, and she specializes in probably what I would say is the biggest growth market for musicians uh, when we're dealing with, you know, record sales no longer being a, a given as a source of income and, and gigging being, a, you know, something that requires a whole lot of outpouring of effort for a, a unsure return. Licensing, TV, film, video game licensing is where it's at. And that's the good news. The bad news is that everybody's figured that out. So um, what we want to do is we want to talk to Kim and kind of find out uh, how, do we, how do we work out our strategic advantage? What exactly is this whole business about of, of licensing? And all of that. So without further ado, Kim, Nieva, say hello to the Internet. Hello, Internet Music Makers. Brian, how are you doing? I am doing well. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks so, for having me. Of course, of course. So listen, let's before we get into the, the nitty-gritty of sync royalties and all kinds of weirdness with uh, words like publishing and, and things that we haven't, as musicians, haven't really thought of, why don't you tell us a little bit about, I guess, Engine House Music and your background and sort of how you got involved in what, in what you're doing? Okay. Um, I started out with Wave Group Sound. They were the uh, musical force behind a lot of the rhythm games, um, Guitar Hero, Rock Band, Karaoke Revolution. Um, just that was our specialty. Um, and from there, we started working um, with, uh, we started developing Rock Band Network and working with artists and putting them directly into the game. We also have a label side uh, where we put out the Guitar Hero soundtracks as well as original artists um, like Nicolant, The Humans, Becca Noon. Uh, and then Engine House is a product of Wave Group, I guess you can say, um, where it houses most of my creative energies. I do music catalogs, um, artist development, anything under the musical sun that, you, you know, the artists need help with. That's what I try to do, um, try to get them to their next goals, their next step. Um, whatever that may be. So, are you you're primarily focused on um, the the licensing side of things, or will you sort of is that is that an umbrella of any any way that you can be involved with the artist, you will be involved with the artist. Any way I can um, assist and support the artist, I'll, um, is what I'll be involved with. And then we also have I also rep the Winograssi Sobel Music Catalog. And they have a roster of just really quality emerging artists. And that's where, where I usually, that's my licensing um, catalog that I go to uh, right now. Um, great new stuff, um, really versatile. And so that's what I'm concentrating on licensing in the licensing world. And then we also, on the opposite end, I also sync music for a rock band network um, and basically distribute, you know, the artist songs in as a playable 
playable rock band game form. So now you can interact with, with your game. So you're, when your you song. say rock band, you're talking about rock band, the video game, right? Correct. Gotcha. Yes. And that, that in itself is sort of a whole thing that's blown up in the last, what, five, six years? Yeah, definitely. And now um, we're also looking at it as, from the technology standpoint, it's a new distribution um, method. You know, we could distribute through um, CDs and digital and now through video games. Right. I mean, I just today was uh, on the Internet. I was looking for an artist uh, on YouTube, and I ended up finding a video. It was that art. It was The title of the video was That Artist Verse. Beastie Boys, and I, I was like, oh, I didn't know that they collaborated, and then I clicked the link, <laughs> and it was one of these, I can't remember what video game, it was one of those video games where you see the little, like, X's and O's flying at you in 3D space, and you're, you know, clicking uh -huh. them off, right? So, like, the, the rock band type thing, and I just thought, like, wow, there is, like, I mean, the, these two artists, uh, the, they haven't worked with the Beastie Boys, but in essence, they have, as far as the YouTube viewer is concerned, and what a great way to sort of get themselves out to fans of the Beastie Boys, and I found them through that, and, you know, it's it's a whole nother ball game in terms of what we're used to as musicians, I think, right? Yeah, it's a new way to consume music and interact with the music, because now you're physically, you know, doing something with the song and kind of playing with the rhythm, rhythms, whatever brand of um, the game it may be, you know, like, like the one on YouTube, or Rock Band, or Guitar Hero, or anything. Um, it's a it's a new way to play with your song when it's done. <laughs> right. And so w let's, let's sort of talk about, I guess, um, there's the logistics, the strategy, the financials. But let's start with the financials. Sales for musicians are down. I think we're all aware of that. Physical sales, uh, obviously. Download sales never really took over for physical. The torrent mm -hmm. thing is out there. And, and a lot of musicians are starting to look at their music as a... Uh, the, the actual production of their music is a promotional expense for the brand of themselves. You know, they become the commodity and the music is just the advertising medium by which they advertise. Um, but in the one place where, where the, the money still exists and there's still a revenue stream for musicians, it's fairly reliable, is in the licensing. But what, what exactly are we talking about? If, if you're getting your music on a video game, is there a formula where you can say, oh, that's going to be... 10 grand or that's going to be you know no there's unfortunately there's no formula or mechanical or standard at this point um it's basically it's basically a um a negotiation between yourself and, and the development company um be it video games or tv or or um film advertising it's all a, an open negotiation with the production company or whoever's licensed the ad because there's that leaves a wide range of what you can what you can um, do but basically I feel like as long as the artist is comfortable with what they're doing um, and what and as long as they're comfortable with the fee I think that's the best way to way to go gotcha. um, if you feel like you're getting if you feel like your um, your your song is going to get a lot of exposure from it then you know, I feel like it's okay to take a little bit of a smaller fee. Um, budgets are shrinking on both ends as well on the production side. So, and there's so much, there's so many music out there available. Um, fees have lowered a little bit. Um, that's just the reality of it. But the exposure is still right. the best thing. You but know, and, and is it, oh, sorry, is it literally negotiable to the point where the you know a, a video game company and an EA Sports or a, an Activision could come to an artist and say, "We want to use your song. We want to make it a feature in the game. We will pay you one dollar, but your exposure will be fantastic." And you, <laughs> is it, is it or is it like you know in, in film terms, there are certain rules that govern like you can't. You, there's certain like I don't know if it's union rules or if it's uh, there's some kind of rules in terms of film licensing where you. There's like a minimum spec rate, right? Yeah. No, at the moment, there's no you know unionized rules. That's actually a really good good idea, Ryan. <laughs> but, <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we're going to unionize. No, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll go get the Teamsters. Um, um, there's no rules yet. It um, really does range from you know from a dollar to you know um, a bajillion dollars, but I don't think the studios are are looking to you know 
totally low ball the artists a lot most of the actually i could almost say 100 percent of the supervisors are music fans themselves and so they really respect the artists and the craft and you know if it's a lower if it's a lower fee um they'll try to do something to compensate with that like you know a chiron which is basically a little card that would be like right here or so um, (laughs) that says you don't realize that you're actually holding your fingers up on your chiron so (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you've got one on, on the screen here. right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Um, yeah, and so, you know, it says the name of the band, the, the song, um, and then, you know, people are able to even Google lyrics or Google a scene that it's in and um, find your song. Um, and, and, you know, that really drives back in revenues as well. Right, right. Uh, quick uh, question from the forum that I'll, I can take. Uh, S4 me wants to know how you spell Chiron. It's C H I R O N. Chiron. So there you go. <laughs> um, so, well, there's been a few questions. I want to go back and uh, make sure we're not forgetting anybody. Um, so the first one was. Uh, it was a pretty broad question, but it's a, a completely valid one. How do I find... This is from Mix Up and Blend. He wants to know, how do I find persons who want to license my music? Okay. Where do you even um, begin? I'm sorry? And where do you even begin? Oh, um, research. Everything always starts with research. Um, the person you're looking for would be the music supervisor um, for most uh, projects. Sometimes, if they don't have a music supervisor, it would be the post-production supervisor. Um, and then, you know, when you're, when you found what, what, um, like, let's say you're, you're looking up a movie, then you want to look for the music supervisor. Um, I suggest looking up what past projects the music supervisor has done before and see what they like, see what they've used. Um, because you want to, you always want to come off completely professional and prepared. So if you're, if your music is metal, you don't necessarily want to approach a music supervisor who uses mostly, you know, acoustic folk um, <laughs> because they may not necessarily have the need. If it's a great song, a supervisor will always keep it, you know, keep it in their files. So that's always a plus. But um, you want to strike where there's, you know, there's the most possibilities for use of your song. I see. Um, yeah. And so... And- in terms of finding those music supervisors, I mean, are, are we talking like watch TV and write down when you see the name in the credits and, and go to Google? Is Yeah, you could do that. Um, IMDb is a great source um, for video games. Video game forums are um, a great source. The Internet is just has completely opened up the, unfortunately, opened up the um, library to all the music supervisors. So for them, they're getting hit up like a thousand times a day. Mm. But, you know they're still on the search for really good music, you know? Um, so, so how, research on internet, TV. Has that Sorry. made, has that made the job harder for us or harder for them? I mean, we, they're more accessible to us, but there's more competition of all of us going at them and they've got to sift through more stuff. So is it, who's, who's got the burden there? Is it, is it, is it, <laughs> do they just have, are they just inundated or is there still a way that you can sort of get through to them? Um, they're definitely inundated. It's, it's harder for both ends, I think, um, since the licensing um, world has opened up so much and technology's out there. So musicians, even the, the quality of musicians are even you know, getting higher and higher. Um, but uh, I think the best way is to partner with um, um, a pitching house or a publisher um, to get your movie out there or, or a third party licensing company because it's their jobs, it's our jobs to you know, make relationships with the supervisors um, and you know it's our job to make sure that they trust us we become a trusted source for new music um, and so if they if the supervisor knows you and they know your catalog um, if they're looking for something you know if we're looking for um, trip hop they'll know who to go to they'll have a certain amount of publishers and and trusted pitching houses to reference to and be able to pick out some music gotcha Okay, I mean, it's uh, so that the, the key essentially you become an agent, right? Is, mm-hmm. is it was that even is it the wrong term or is that actually even really what the relationship is? Um, I'm I'm hesitant to use the word agent just because it usually is associated to placement of an uh, or putting them into an employment situation. Uh-huh. Okay, but um, it's 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 um. It's, to, it's an agent in a way that you have um, 
you're you're the person that's constantly looking out for your artists you're the one putting making sure that your, their music is out there making sure that their music is in the hands of the right supervisors and in the hands of the right networks um and so yeah i guess i guess it is kind of agent in, in some sense <laughs> are you and with engine house music are you working with a, a fixed roster of of musicians artists and bands and then you sort of pitch and rep them to all these companies or is it that you field sort of open submissions at all times for all things like i've seen services it's like email mm-hmm. subscriptions and someone will you sign, sign up for it and they'll just send you an email and say okay we're looking for or so and so's looking for uh music a la twilight kind of vampire goth music send me what you got and it, it's open to whoever wants to sign up for it and then there's the other which is like you've got 10 people and these are my guys and i, I pitch them yeah um, yeah, Engine House works exclusively with um, Woodengrasky Sobel's catalog, um, and so we, before we pitch to anyone, we sign um, artists first. Uh, there's no like upfront fee or anything. We um, do a as a partner, but our roster um, will A and R and go out and go to the shows and search for new music that is interested. With, uh, with people, artists that are interested in in working with, in licensing, and people that we think that um, could be successful in licensing, um, and so through Winso, that's our nickname for it. <laughs> what is it? Um, Winso. Winso. Winograss Sobel. Yeah, gotcha. it gets tired to say the whole thing. <laughs> so, um, as an agent of Winso, um, we go out and sign and um, new artists and. Um, set them up with a deal that they're comfortable with as as well as ourselves and then from there we have our roster of of artists um and then you know once we hear we'll put out samplers of um the new stuff um all the you know hits ready to be made and um um we'll go out and actively look for or you look uh, we'll go out into the community and see what everyone's working on and see what they need and deliver music that we feel works for that for that um, genre or movie or or anything I see I mean it almost seems like there's like um, it's like a few hurdles I'm thinking from a musician's perspective right it's like mm-hmm. there's all these like uh, it's almost music supervisors along the way, right? Like you need, <laughs> you need to get in in with the Winso catalog, and then with you, and then if you think it's right for this project, you'll pitch to the music supervisor, and if they think it's right for the project, they'll pitch to the you know the whoever you know, the director yeah. of the film. Or <laughs> and so it's like uh, a whole bunch of sort of steps that you need to kind of clear all of them before you actually are seeing your name on TV, on the screen, or in a game, or whatever. Yeah, it's definitely a long road, and there's no one straight path to to do so. I know a lot of artists that do license them, um, license their music out themselves. But I think while doing that, they also do have to kind of become an, an agent for themselves. They have to make sure they, you know, they have to meet the supervisors, meet the people in the production companies. Uh, I just just so much people are just inundated with so much music right now. Um, they want to, you know, see who they're working with and know who they're working with. Um, but as for an artist, you know, th- there's no reason why you shouldn't look for a supervisor yourself. You, sh- that you can approach, you can approach any person in the industry yourself. Um, and I, actually, that's that's a that's a totally great way to go too. And I know a lot of artists who do license their own music themselves, and um, they're able to do so and. You know, as long as you understand the publishing and the clearance and, um, portions and the you know legality of it, I say why not go for it. You know, right. there was a, a question, a related question uh, from Rukafest. He wants to know how many times can one song be used, um, or is a song sold once for a project, and that's that's kind of it. Um, if it's sold once for a project, it's called a buyout. Um, you usually don't want to do that. You want to keep your your publishing and master you want to um, make sure you retain those rights so that you can use it as many times as you want if you need um, if a song gets too big and too associated to one item like a you know like a commercial or an advertisement or um, one scene people will be a little more hesitant to use it again for another scene mm-hmm. just because it's become so it's, it's like it's become so hand in hand with the other product um, but there really is no law or you know um limit to one use of a song 
you could you know keep getting your keep getting your song out there keep getting it exposed it's uh i i i'm instantly reminded of that song um what's it called spirit in the sky you know it's, oh. it's it's like yeah Norman. It's, yeah, Norman, yeah Norman right Norman like has made quite a living off of that song it's in everything and anytime they ever want to do a, a film from the 60s or 70s whenever that's from it's like the opening trailer music and it's just like it's, it's everywhere so certainly in his case a buyout would not be the right option uh, there's a, there's another question that is there's actually it's come up a few times so I'll, I'll ask you about it and I don't know if you can speak directly about it but maybe you can speak in terms of companies like this there's a lot of people that want to know about taxi and that's a big name that's out there um, they represent a, a service that is not exclusive to them so I wonder if, if you could give us your thoughts on services like taxi uh, and and are they is this something we should all be considering Oh, you put me in some hot water here, Ryan. <laughs> well, okay. um, I would say let's let me let me broaden it then, because I, I don't want you to uh, if you if you don't want to talk about taxi, that's fine. Um, but oh. what about services where essentially you're sort of uh, you're buying into a service that is partially um, based on uh, the idea that you can get your music in front of the right people and it's also it seems equally based on we will give you consultant advice on how you can shape your music and your song is that right. generic enough <laughs> no um that's a good question uh well first off i've i mean different companies have their own their own methods and it's um you know, it's been able to work for a bunch of artists and and the companies themselves. And so, you know, I you gotta love, you know, everyone who's doing their thing in the music industry. Um, I think uh, with um, I personally um, like to concentrate more on the companies that do it more as a partnership with the artist rather than a service. I mean, as long as the the success of the artist is also also determines um, the success of the company. Um, so I like to look at it definitely more as a partnership rather than a paid service. Um, I see. Upfront, I mean, upfront fees. You know, you totally need those for certain companies and the way that they're run and to to keep them running well. Um, but I feel like if the music if the artist isn't getting paid, um, then the company shouldn't be getting paid because that's you know, it's the it's the company's job to get the artist's music out there and um, you know make sure that they're if if that both ends of the jobs are are done. You know, um, the artist is getting um, their service and um, the company is you know doing well for them. I definitely think it's a partnership. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, interestingly, uh, comment in the in the. Uh, chat room right now says that Norman Greenbaum is a Propellerhead user. I did not know that. So oh. <laughs> there you go. Um, Braindrop wants to know, since m most of the music featured in video games are from artists within the areas of the US, the UK, and, and probably Europe to a degree, how does someone, for example, in Asia, approach a big game studio in the West? Ooh, good question. Um, probably probably same same as um, and licensing from anywhere in the world just you know um if a company's based in the u.s try to look try to do your research on that company um on u.s websites and um you'll be able to find who is in charge of that company um i think with with technology um now you have the ability to work from anywhere in the world and um the ability to reach anyone else in the world so um, even if you're in Asia or Latin America or, or you know, um, Antarctica, I think you still have to go through the, the Western channels of, of finding who the correct person is and reaching that correct person and then, and then doing so. You can also partner with a, with a pitching house or publishing house um, or licensing house in the U.S. to to have you know someone on the ground doing that i think that's a great way to to get your music um on the western front um you know someone someone on the ground is always going to be a little more aware of what's going on than someone that's unfortunately a, f a few thousand miles away 
right. um, and they're able to make that face-to-face -face connection. So probably going, uh, finding um, a pitching house you're comfortable with would be the, the best way to go. And I guess, um, how, do I, how do I word this? I'm, I'm curious to know uh, from someone who's on your side of the fence, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking as a musician, but on your side of the fence, what is it you're looking for when you get a submission to music? And essentially, I'm, what I'm asking is, what should I be sending you as a musician? Do you want uh, full mixes, stems, instrumentals, 16-bar uh, sections, or full songs? I mean, what is the ideal package? Um, I, um, a few MP3s, about three or four MP3s, and a one-sheet would be the best way, um, would, is what I prefer. Um, if you're... If you're looking for, if you have a full CD, um, I a lot of people like to use um, zip files or or um, SoundCloud. If it's a full CD that that just came out, and you know we've already we've already made a relationship from the a few tracks that you've sent before, I like the actual physical because I do a lot of. I live in LA, so I do a lot of my listening <laughs> in the car in traffic. Right. Um, that's where I do most of my A and R. Mobile office. But um, exact yeah. <laughs> Um, there is a, a question. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think you froze for a second. Oh yeah. I, I think you froze for a second too. Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, start off with a few MP3s just to get acquainted and, um, um, a little bit about yourself. So we know who you are and we know what you're, what you're doing. And it would just be MP3s, like literally the, the mixes off your album with. Yeah. Yeah. Just MP3s mastered, of, of your the whole deal. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right. Interesting. I think you froze again. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There you are. <laughs> um, there is a, uh, a question. Oh, yeah. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Mix Up and Blend uh, has a question that I was hoping we could uh, explain to people. Can you describe to people a one sheet? Oh, yeah. A one sheet is basically a, a marketing tool um, that tells, tells whoever you're giving it to um, um, a little about yourself, a little bit about your album. Um, a nice picture or graphic is always good to have, you know, something appealing to the eye that makes me want to read it or makes anyone want to read it. Um, and, um, it, you know, kind of just tells people what, what your marketing ideas are and what you want to do with your music and basically a small bio of yourself that, you know, is all tied it, up and pretty. It's the closest <laughs> thing to a resume. Um, musicians yes. kind of have to do and I know we all became musicians because we didn't want to have to do resumes but <laughs> you got to do a one sheet that's that that much is true and uh, mix up and blend if you google uh, one sheet you know m music publishing one sheet or some combination of those words you'll find examples and I know when I've done them in the past that's how I started was looking at e examples the yep. same way you would google for a resume example to try and figure out how to do one of those the, you, you can just follow the format and uh, it's pretty effective so uh, Anuso wants to know, does the industry follow musical trends when licensing, as in, for example, is dubstep immensely popular right now in music licensing? And is that kind of mostly what's going on or, or what? Um, I think they do, they, they do tend to follow trends. I don't think it's necessarily a um, conscious effort to do so, but, you know, um, just as far as music trends go, um, we're going to use things that that um, people like as well. Um, I don't, I actually, I love dubstep. I know a lot of my um, friends in the in the music community also love dubstep. It's a little harder to place. Um, and so as far as the popularity of dubstep right now compared to what's, let me see, make sure I'm on the screen, what's <laughs> being used, um, um, what's being synced. I don't, uh, I think there's a higher ratio of the popularity than actually, you know, being licensed and used in, and it just because it's such a hard category, hard genre to put in um, scenes and to put in, you know, um, um, to find a good scene that calls for dubstep or even to use even to use dubstep while people are, you know, yeah, while people have dialogue going, it's a little harder to to um, make sure that the dialogue is heard because, of course, in sync, the music has to support the scene. I see. I see. Um and there was uh, an, another question. Where did it go? Oh, my eyes. Uh -huh. Scanning, scanning. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, the, yeah, okay, so let me see if I can understand the question. I might have to adapt it as we go here. Uh, it's, the question is about copyright. And how okay. much copyright must an artist be willing to take... Uh, how much copyright must an artist be willing to take this route 
copyright his her music prior I'm just going to read it phonetically and then we'll figure it out okay. prior, to take his route prior, copyright his her music prior to submitting or is this included as part of the service offered okay I think what he's asking is uh, do you need to copyright your music prior to submitting to um, to publishers and, and, and supervisors or is that something that when you kind of hook up with a firm uh, like Engine House Music or, or with the, the broader Winsor catalog is that something that's handled for you um, it depends on the company, really. Um, depends on if they have a, an administration side for publishing. Um, I personally think you should always copy your you copyright your music beforehand. Um, if if you're partnering with a company that also handles copyright or or um, shares in in copyright, they'll obviously um, be able to submit and register your songs for you. But uh, um, being, being that I've you know done music myself in the past, I think um, you should always you know be like be able to protect yourself and um, do the copyright beforehand. You know, um, and send it in. It doesn't even have to be a full fully finished track to get a copyright and um, just the kind of bare bones or sketch of it all. Like you don't even have to put in your final mix. I see. And um, I'm just going to keep feeling these questions here from the chat. They got a lot of good ones coming in here. Uh, they're curious. Ill Factor was curious to know. How often does the opportunity arrive to actually involve, I guess, the licensor or the, the, the end, you know, be it a, a TV house or a video game company, to involve them in the creative process of doing the music? Are they looking for finished tracks or are they ever wanting to actually sort of license maybe not a particular song but the artist and bring them in for something? Um, yeah, they're usually looking for finished songs unless um, it's a special case when they're look when there's you know, an involvement in, in um, a songwriter, like if, if they need, let's say a character um, is becoming a musician, they'll usually hire out a composer or someone to, to uh, or, you know, an engineer or another artist to help in that case. But as for straight sync licensing, it's usually, it's actually always a finished product. Maybe they'll go back to the artist and ask if you could make an edit or do some tweaks, something like that. But um, for the most part, it has to be, you know, 95% finished it's not 100 i see and um a, a simple question comes from mix up and blend but it's it's a good one he says okay maybe it's an ignorant question but what's the difference between publishing and licensing is there um one? it's actually it's just more of the the terminology publishing is is the um, actual written composition that um you as the artist um holds on to and you know that's that's your. That's what you guys have, and you know that's what makes collects the royalties. Licensing is the act of um, licensing your music out to different licensors, or which who, who would be the networks or the music supervisors or the production companies. So licensing, I think, is just the the actual verb of it, act of licensing your publishing. Is right. that okay? Yeah, does that totally help make, yeah, totally. <laughs> you retain your publishing so that you may license to people, but. Um, I'm yeah. oh, sorry. You. Oh, I said. Oh. I was saying. I was saying. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. You're saying you you, oh. you retain your publishing in order to license your music. Exactly. But exactly. It's it's the commodity is the publishing. The act is the licensing. Exactly. Okay. Good. Good answer. Um, okay. More questions. More questions. <laughs> um, so, oh, someone saw. I don't know where it is now, but I saw it up there. How do you once you license your music? How do you? sort of police that it's not being used outside of the scope of that license you know if some oh. you know what i mean yeah like they don't put it on um, every show that they do now or every game they do or um a lot of that responsibility falls onto your um your uh, writing society ascap um bmi csac those are the three american firms and it's their responsibility to to make sure that um, all your performing performing rights are handled, so it's their responsibility to look to make sure that that the um, uh, that the production company is paying out for the use of your song, and um, every time it broadcasts, um, you you get a royalty for the use of your song. Um, usually, I don't, I don't I've never heard of a, a situation where um, they've used your song where it hasn't been um, uh, licensed in or like. Um, brought to your attention prior to signing the license agreement. Um, usually, it'll come. It'll go. They're they're pretty straightforward with the use. Um, you're signing off your use for 
for uh, TV and um, advertising and whatever. So, sorry, Ryan, I got distracted. I was I was watching. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the license will usually will usually spell out where it's going to be used if it's going to be used in the in the scene and then used you know for advertising for that scene alone or you know when you're doing the recap of last week's episode like this on last week's episode mm-hmm. um, and it, it may it may be in there too but I'll, that'll be listed um, in in the license if it goes onto DVD or all media is what you're looking at basically it's a term you're looking for. Um, all media huh? associated to yeah all media associated to that use and that that particular project um is is just what you want to make sure otherwise um the other performance royalties um the you can trust in the hands of your your prs or pro gotcha okay um so there was a oh where to go now it was a good question too oh yeah that's right pushed button is asking are there any gimmicks that you're sick of seeing? Like, what should we not do to try and get your attention? Um, gimmicks. Let's see. Um, I'm a pretty patient person, <laughs> so it's, it's not. I don't get too tired of. of um, uh, probably once people that um, call like a little too like you know I'm I'm all about the follow up. Don't get me wrong, and I'll listen to your your music. Um, but you got to give us time to listen to it. And so, so when people are a little too aggressive about um, making sure that you've heard the full CD and everything, I, I think that's the only gimmick that um, um, gotcha. yeah. is a little frustrating for me. Um, you know, always follow up for sure, but maybe not every day or, <laughs> or every other day. All right. So, uh, so we should all, as musicians, we should all watch that <laughs> scene in uh, Swingers where they talk about, you know, you don't call the next day. You don't No, You can't call the second day. You, you, so <laughs> we watch that scene, guys. You'll, you'll get the timing down, I guess, on when to, when to do the follow up call. Um, <laughs> so um, actually, well, OK, so Pedestrian Mon- Monkey actually asks, so what would be a fair amount of time? Um, I like to wait about two weeks first, you know, oh, okay. um, wow. once you've sent it in. I, I usually do like to um, um, get an email from someone first, just introducing themselves so that I know who you are. Um, I know what I'm listening to. Um, and then once I receive the music, um, you know, I'll, I'll listen to it. And especially with, uh, with music supervisors and um, um, other publishing houses, they have stacks and stacks of music. So it's not that we're not listening it's just we haven't you know gotten to your place in line yet um but i mean like i said we're all music lovers um most of us are also musicians um we'd love to hear the new music uh it's mostly just if we if you haven't heard from us yet i apologize um (laughs) but we're we're totally gonna get to it and um you know follow up and and um we'll follow up too i mean it's almost like you've replaced you know we always heard about the the stories of the A and R guy that had a stack of tapes. This is back. I'm dating <laughs> myself, but a stack of cassette tapes on his desk, right? And you know, the horror story was always: you got 10 seconds. You put in the cassette, you hit play, 10 seconds, and it's out. And if it hasn't grabbed them, is that true? I mean, is it really like that? That you'll drop a CD in in your car and take a listen and give it the old scan? And um, I can't speak for everyone. Um, I I try to give the artists um, a fair amount of listening time because they took the time to create it and send it over um so i try to you know give them a few tracks i'll usually do um three tracks um if not the whole album um three tracks will usually tell me if i if i want to listen to the rest of the album if i like what i'm hearing i'll i'll keep listening to it because i'm a fan um but i try not to do the 10 second mark okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> From all of us, <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, another thing I wanted to uh, find out about, when it, when it comes to the actual licensing, I've had friends that have had uh, music licensed, and I've had music licensed. Uh, and one thing that became clear is that there is a big difference, this is at least speaking on the TV side of things, between having your music licensed when there are vocals going on and having your mm-hmm. music licensed when there are not vocals going on. A massive di- uh, discrepancy in the actual sort of I, not maybe not flat fee but the i guess ultimately the the bottom line the dollars that you get for is a lot more with vocals um is that is that true for small or is that just my own incorrect anecdotal observation 
Um, no, I, that is um, fairly true. But um, I think when you're licensing a song um, and they ask for for vocal and non-vocal, um, oh, by the way, you should always also, when you're bouncing out your vocal, also bounce out a non-vocal, um, just so that, so that you have it and editors are, allowed, are able to play with it a little bit more. Um, but um, when you're licensing it with vocals, um, I think it it does it does heighten the fee a little bit more just because you're featuring the song a little bit more. I see. Um, um, when it's non when it's an instrumental, it's usually more of a background use. Um, so background uses are do um, lower the fee a little bit as well. Um, but when you have even when you use a even when you're the uh, editors are using both a vocal and an instrumental. It's still considered a vocal because um, the instrumental is just used for editing around the dialogue. Um, I see. And sure. but um, yeah, I think you're right. I think I think there is a little bit of a cost difference between um, instrumentals and vocals. And I think vocals are usually are usually looked at more as you know a full song, a full. A full featured, you know, track um, and featuring, you know, that gets the artist exposure. Whereas an instrumental, um, people think of it more as background and, you know, score uh-huh. that isn't as, you know, isn't necessarily a pop use. I see. But but that being said, so it's still your your recommendation that we export the uh, the instrumental as well. I mean, the the strategic thinking and it's probably yeah, flawed strategic exactly. thinking is. Perfect. I'll just fill up my tracks with all vocals, and I'll only give them that version, and then I'll, I'll, I'll hit it big, right? But <laughs> that's not the case, no. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was another question I thought was interesting that came in uh, about, uh, specifically in the video game market, uh, what they're sort of sub markets right now, and which markets are hot in terms of uh, actual, you know, getting your music out there. There's, you know, in uh, in the box, like the the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3 type console based things and then there's web based games there's iPhone apps now and it's like is there is there one area that's more um, not lucrative is the wrong word I'm looking for but the more sort of uh, active in terms of looking for music right now um, the bigger productions are, are always going to have the bigger budgets and be able to pay and market your song a little bit more um, but with you know iPhone apps and web based apps I wouldn't discount those either because they're reaching a um, high number of people as well. And, you know, as long as there's people listening, it's a good thing for your music. Um, I think especially uh, artists have to be creative and with um, what they're licensing their music to. Um, you can license it to, um, you know, someone's uh, a small video game that is gratis, but if it's getting a ton of exposure and it's getting a ton of application downloads on your on your iPhone, then you know a thousand people are hearing your song, and um, a thousand people might be inclined to download your song. Mm. Um, and so, I think there's more there's more monetary vo- volume in other you know console games, um, but I think. There's a lot of exposure in um, web-based apps and, um, um, you know, the smaller budget um, video games as well. Gotcha. Well, listen, I'm going to uh, send the word out to the chat here. that We're going to be winding this up in a few questions. So send in your last questions, uh, and I will, I'll throw them out there to Kim uh, before we are through. And, Kim, I wanted to ask you, um, I, I sort of have this, what happens to me when I listen to this, discussion as I go, oh man, licensing, I gotta, I gotta get into this. And I start, my, my natural tendency is to slide into this, I should start making music with specific things in mind. I should make a track that I, that would work in the next teen comedy movie. And I should just, I write what I write and hopefully someone likes it. I mean, I think I've seen I've seen it be uh, I've seen it um, succeed um, in that way, but I feel like that's more um, commercial writing um, okay. type. If you're a if you're um, artist ready to develop your sound and you know um, become do do your own thing with like pop music and everything, I think it's it's fair for the artist to write 
in their style, right? What's what's naturally coming out of them? Like, don't change your, don't change your um, sound or style to to fit the market, you know. And then, um, like, do what you do, and do if you're doing what you do well, um, the it'll it'll be the publishing houses or the the pitching or your your pitching partners or whoever. It's their job to find a market for your sound. I don't think you should necessarily change your sound to fit into whatever's out there. I um, and I mean, I, I mean, it's your art, you know, I say, you know, keep it the way you want it and then find, find a place for it to fit. Gotcha. And, um, so there was a, a question from Chromacoy. Uh, he's asking in today's market, do you recommend musicians to give out their music for free and rely on, on live performances and licensing and, and other forms of revenue? Um, I wouldn't say give the whole album out for free. Um, I do think that um, free downloads are a huge, huge promotional step um, and works really well. Um, I like to um, I like to suggest like alt versions of, of your songs rather than the full album version. Maybe do um, you know an acoustic version and and um, send make that go viral or, or do um, you know. It, an alt version that has an accordion in it for some reason, a different featured featured um, instrument, um, or you know, do you, do the actual song, mm. um, the album version, um, but only you know, two or like one or two, um, and set that up for for to get people interested in the full album. Um, but I really like the idea of alt versions, um, just because if you really like a song, you're gonna be interested in the in different ways that, you know, you know it can be um, reincarnated into. I see. Yeah. I see. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I think we'll, we'll make this our last question. It's about a, a one area that we haven't uh, talked about, which is uh, podcasts. And uh, the, the examples they give are NPR podcasts, This American Life and whatnot. So that's actually a, a broader of actual radio usage. But podcasts in general, is that, is that a, a segment of the business that's worth approaching? Or is it a relatively small or, or, or un, something that's tough to penetrate into? Um, I, think it's, I think it's definitely growing. And um Basically, any way you can get your music out there is a good way, and any way you can um, interact with your fans is um, uh, is something you want to look into. Podcasts, I think, have the ability to do that. Um, they they showcase who you are as well as your music. Um, I see. And, and so, I mean, I, I definitely think it's it's worth a shot to to get into. And I know I said last question, but there's another one from Right Tracks that he he re asked, so I don't want it to go unasked. Uh, right Tracks wants to know: Do songs have to have an artist attached to it, or will a great song by a non-named vocalist suffice? An artist, um, as in a known yeah, artist. Should we, artist should we be contacting one, Cindy Lauper to get her to do the vocals on oh. the track so that we can get licensed, or can we just find a good vocalist? I think you can find a good vocalist. I mean, I think a name always helps. Um, but if a, if a good song is a good song, it's gonna it's it's gonna do well. Um, I think a lot of music supervisors like to find unknown artists because they want to break the next band. I mean, you know, it's happened a ton in the in the last few years. Um, the Fray were unknown, and and um, they broke in Grey's Anatomy. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, I think I think I mean established artists. It's a little bit easier for them to to um, get licensed just because people are already aware of the of who they are. Okay. But uh, I think it's just as good for a, an emerging artist. I see. Cool. Well, listen, Kim. I want to thank you very much for joining us and sort of uh, downloading your brain's contents to us <laughs> via <laughs> the power of Skype. I think there's there is a lot for us to kind of get our heads around with this, and it's a whole segment that's growing like gangbusters in terms of musicians awareness and there's a lot out there that's, that's probably incorrect information and a lot of unknowns that we all have we've sort of we've spent you know 50 years understanding that you need to get in a van and drive around a gig and then you'll sell your cds and we kind of all figured that out and then that all went away and so now we're all kind of going well what's the new method and this is the new method so thank you so much for yeah for thank you for having questions. me and um what uh, if people want to find out more about engine house music uh, where can they go? 
you can go to www.enginehousemusic.com um, or follow us on Twitter um, at Engine House Muse, M-U-S-E, um, characters, <laughs> and um, see what we're up to up to there. Cool. Yeah, and if I could say one last thing, as long as you guys are making good music, um, you know, just make sure people hear it. I think that's the best way to get your music exposed and make sure people people know that it's out there. Right, right. Excellent. I think Sorry. that is a, a a perfect a perfect ending note for us. So. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, let's all guys. Let's go out there and make sure we're making good music and getting it out there. I think that's the key. Well, thanks so much, Kim, and uh, we'll be talking to you and see you later. Thanks, Ryan. Take see care, you guys. So that does it for us tonight. We are back tomorrow night. We've got Ed Bauman with us, uh, also known on our forums and out in the world as Edit Ed for TV. He does these things called recovers. Um, he's a reason user, so he likes all the re thing, right? Um, and they're amazing. He does these things that have been, you know, re these remakes of uh, Human League songs, a lot of songs from the 80s where he sort of takes these synths apart. And he's got this mind that can actually sort of hear within 15 tracks what what is the oscillator for that synth and what's the effect that's on it and how is it filtered and, and how is it being modulated with this LFO to make that sound. So he's gotten really good at that and he's going to share some of that with us as well and kind of help us who are maybe new to synth des sound design and synth theory. He's going to help us kind of approach making the sound that we hear in our head but don't quite know how to make. So that's tomorrow night. That's going to be at 9 p.m. European, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon, Pacific time, and I let everybody else around the world figure out where and when that is for them. Um, but um, that's it tonight. And again, if you guys want to have your music used in our broadcast like that, go ahead and send us your music. You can tweet it to MMM Prop Songs. That's the hashtag. Hashtag MMM Prop Songs. I'll check it every day. I'll put up some new music or post it on our Facebook wall. That's facebook.com slash propellerhead. And this will be you. I'll see you tomorrow night. But ain't sure how she's supposed to start a life in that real world. Find love, become a starter wife. Huh? But on a fight because she thinks it's apparent that her parents are being unfair and don't care about all the problems that she's going through. And it's okay, girl, because ain't nobody really knowing you, right? So she bottles them up. And washes them down with friends that she's found in the bottles of crown And then wanders around the headspace she's made for herself Wishes anyone away that might save her from this hell She ain't lying in the mess she made And the problems she can't fix she'll drink the rest away But she prays that one day that she actually might live that happy life Thinking that'd be nice, find that Mr. Right that she'll grow accustomed to Yeah, right, but only for half a trust in two Thinking he'll just do because he acts so honest And it's all new and fresh, he's doing what he promised But the boys there and don't seem to come Cause your new boyfriend ain't as nice as the last one I don't know why you can't get along